good evening everyone before we get into a detailed discussion uh, about financials it is important to highlight i mean it's important to highlight why discussion on financial service is so important and relevant if you look at financial service share in nifty 50 it has gone up from 13% in fy05 to around 35% currently so financials constitute more than one third of the market cap. Even their share in Nifty 50 profit is about 30%. Well, now if you go normally, when you when people refer to BFSI as a sector, they think it is all about banks and NBFCs. But BFSI as an abbreviation stands for banking, financial service and insurance. And within BFSI sector, financial services and insurance have gained their presence over the last couple of years. So broadly, we can divide uh, BFSI into three segments, lending, non-lending, and facilitators. Lending consists of banks, NBFCs like HFCs, auto finance companies, non-lending mainly constitute of insurance companies, both life and general insurance companies, plus asset management. In the third category, we have facilitators of financial ecosystems like brokerages, exchange, rating agency, depositories, RTA, cash management companies. I would like to state that often these facilitators are ignored when we look at BFSI universe, as they are very small in terms of you know, total profit or market cap compared to other large companies. But these companies have very steady business outlook. They are capital light businesses, Unlike lending and insurance companies, they don't require capital infusion for growth. It is either a two player or a three player market, very less competition. Let's say for example, RTA business is a duopoly with the presence of only two meaningful players. Business therefore depends on the overall mutual fund industry growth. And I need not be worried about where the which mutual fund is gaining market share and which mutual fund is losing market share. So these facilitators are very important in the overall ecosystem. Moving to next slide, you know, if you look at on all parameters, financial service in India have lesser penetration versus most of the other developed or even developing countries. Our credit to GDP is only 58%. Per capita insurance numbers are also much lower versus other markets. Mutual fund AUM to GDP is also much lower versus other countries. This suggests that there is a long runway for higher than nominal GDP growth rate. In the next slide, we have digital penetration on the left-hand side and the financial penetration on the right-hand side. Out of 150 crore or people in India, if you look at digital penetration numbers, almost three-fourths of the population has 4G connection. Let me repeat myself, almost three-fourths of the population has 4G connection. 350 million people pay digitally and around 500 million people have OTT connections. Against this, if you look at some of the financial metrics, less than 130 million MF portfolio we have, there are less than 40 million NSC active accounts and only 60 million live, lives are covered under retail health insurance. I would like to note one very interesting data point the number of people who have taken Hotstar subscription to watch cricket match in India are higher than the people who have taken retail health policy. This is a very low penetration and provide huge opportunity for growth for decades to come. Moving to next slide, you know, it shows how do we evaluate companies under BFSI sector. See, our broader investment philosophy remains same. We want to invest in a great business. In our view, great business should have these three key attributes. It should have superior return on incremental capital. It should be scalable and it should be backed by strong execution and governance. Now, touching upon the first parameter, which is superior return on incremental capital. In order to be profitable, it is prerequisite that the return on incremental or a future capital should be higher than the cost of capital. We believe that the superior return in financial service is possible due to following reasons. Firstly, to start a financial service business in India, you need a license. Whether it is a bank, 
insurance company or a mutual fund. There are track records as well as capital requirements. What in addition, time and investment required to create a profitable franchise is very high. It takes years to build branches, customer relationship, customer trust, and high quality product portfolio. In, why, in our view, this creates barriers to entry and well-run existing players can benefit out of it. Goodwill earned over a years help them gaining more businesses to cross sell more new products. Well-managed companies gain disproportionate market share during down cycle when poorly run companies go out of the business or they downside their operation considerably. We believe this will transform into a superior, superior return over a period to come. In the next slide, you know, if you look at all the subsector of the BFSI industry, we believe that the growth will be higher than the nominal GDP growth rate of India. If we assume nominal GDP to grow at around 10, 11% for few more decades, the credit and the insurance industry in India will grow at two, 3% better than the nominal GDP rate given the under penetration as we discussed in the earlier slides. In both these industries, PSU still account for 60% market share. I would like to share one very interesting data point here again, that when I joined this industry around 15 years before, PSU used to account for 75% market share in the banking industry. Now they are down to 60. On an average, every year they have lost 1% market share. I think the same trend will continue both in credit and the insurance market. Private sector banks, insurance company as a result, will grow at 2-3% better versus their respective industry growth. Now, in the next slide, how I've just shown how the BFSI sector has evolved over years and how private companies have gained market share, which we have already discussed in the previous slides. If you look at banks in the year 1990, private banks used to account for merely 4% of the total credit. Now they are they account for almost 36% market share. In case of life and the non-life insurance, LIC and the government-owned general insurance companies used to account for 100% of the business before the insurance sector was opened up for a private participation. Now private players account for 56 and 59% share in the total business for the life and the non-life insurance company respectively. In the mutual fund business, UTI, who was the only player before private participation actually kicked in, its share is now down to merely 6%. Now, having discussed that the private sector will do very well within the BFSI industry, it is important to find winners among all private companies present in the sector. As we have mentioned a lot of times in our previous discussion, that just because you have an opportunity of superior return and scalability, does not mean that all companies in that sector do very well. You need management and an execution DNA in the organization to execute with a long-term value creation focus. Within BFSI industry, the management who are long-term execution focus will have better risk management practices, control of picks through effective utilization of technology and profitable growth. Let me take one example here. You know, in a, in, in a bank's uh, banking industry, the scalable opportunity was present with Yes Bank, Global Trust Bank, Bank of Rajasthan. But all of them went very near to the bankruptcy in India because of RBI, you don't actually go bankrupt, but you are merged or taken over by any other company, right? But if you compare these two banks, these three, four banks with, let's say, HDFC Bank and Kotak Bank, they have created lakhs and crores of franchise value for all the stakeholders. So what you need is an execution DNA to bank upon the, all the opportunity which you have in the sector. Now, what happens because of these three parameters, right? If you look at having discussed what three attributes which constitute a great business, let me touch upon how the great business for banks and an insurance company will look like. The bank will have the strongest liability franchise, as you can see on the left hand side, wide branch network, very thick corporate relationship, which will give them current accounts, employee salary account, granular deposit, which again translate into a lowest cost of funds for banks. 
the next thing which they have is the very conservative underwriting practices please note that banking is a business where you take you know you take home around 2.5% as a spread but you take 100% as a risk so your underwriting needs to be extremely conservative and top class and third you know given the lower cost of fund which which is the first uh, uh, thing which is important uh, and the and the wide liability branches you have you you have uh, in, ingredients to basically do all kind of loans, whether it is a home loan or an auto loan, which are cheapest in the markets, you'll be able to do that only if you have a lower cost of fund. So as a result, you are you will be present in the all product categories. Now these three combination is unique and extremely difficult to replicate. Similarly, for even an insurance company, a perfect combination of a brand, a very well diversified channel, you know, like banking partnership if you look at the top insurance company in india they will have 20 30 or even 50 60 partnership with banks and nbfcs large agents large and a very well trained agency force and a direct sourcing so this would be a perfect diversified sourcing mix and plus multiple product buckets so they will do everything which is which is available on the insurance side uh, be it be you lay par non par you know protection business Again, these three combination for an insurance company is extremely difficult to replicate and gives a winner an edge over others. Now, having discussed all this, let me also touch upon the regulatory aspect because you know the financial service is the most regulated uh, among all the industries in India. So in our view, the financial service regulation in India are much more balanced fair, independent, and promotes orderly growth of markets versus many other developing countries. In our GEM portfolio, I think, you know, as Vivek spoke about, uh, we have started our GEM product where we can invest in all the emerging market countries. We have chosen to invest only in countries like India, Indonesia, and Peru, only in these three countries, mainly because we believe that, that the financial regulations are quite independent and fair in these countries. And within these countries as well, we have been very careful in selecting banks, which we have investing and hold, our holdings are fairly concentrated. Now, last thing is all about valuation, where a uh, you know, uh, lot of people connected with the equity markets keep making a point that you know the well-run private sector bank, well-run insurance companies are expensive and the poorly run, financial companies, whether it is bank, uh, whether they are present in private sector or PSUs are, uh, you know, cheap and, you know, therefore, you know, it's better to invest in those companies versus the well-run banks. However, you know, the valuation based on price to book or market cap to net worth is not a good indicator of valuation. As you know, the business is all about taking risks. So leverage is very important factor here. So, <clears throat> You know, as you as you can see on the slide that, you know, better metrics to look at is EV divided by total assets. So EV stands for market cap to total borrowing. So we are also taking, uh, you know, borrowings into the picture and just not talking about the equity multiples. So once you add up uh, the total borrowings or the total assets on the price to book multiple, the valuation difference seems very high. As you can see that, you know, uh, for any particular company, uh, if it is trading at two and a half versus the poorly run company at 0.5, you see a 400% difference. Uh, once you, but you, when you compare them on an EV, you know, on an EV to asset basis, the difference would not be so large. So it would be like 1.18 versus 0 0.95, which is a 25% premium. For a well-run bank, uh, you know, which has decades of growth to come upon, right, uh, where you can gain market share. You know, if the overall banking industry is growing at, let's say, 13, 14 odd percent, we'll be able to grow at 3, 4 percent or a 5 percent better. Your return ratios are much better um, uh, versus rest of the industry. I think 25 percent premium is something bare minimum we can give. Now, lastly, if you look at our OCO Finco framework, the way we, uh, you know, uh, do for all the companies, uh, you know, if you have to apply this, for our banking company as well, let's assume there are two companies, company A, company B, you can think of this as 
let's say Bajaj Finance and any other uh, poorly managed NBFC, uh, let's say Bajaj have 24% as an ROE and company B uh, is 14% ROE. And let's assume that we have invested around 100 crores in both the company, company A and company B. Now, let's see how actually the valuation, uh, you know, take place. The return on equity, let's say 100 crore of investment, you will have 24 crores uh, as, uh, as earning for company A and 14 crores for company B. The cost of equity, let's assume it is 10% uh, uh, for both the companies. Uh, and the excess return in the case of company A would be 14. And for the company B, it would be only four. Now let's give an opco multiple of 40x, which is you know given for the markets for both the companies. The company opco valuation, the operating company valuation would be around 560 odd crores. And for company B, it would be around 160 odd crores. A Finco, which you know, uh, generally we give one x uh, uh, a value uh, of 100 crores each for company A, company B. The enterprise value of the of the business for company A would be 660 odd crores, and for the company B would be around 260 odd crores. So the difference on the multiple is 6.6 .6 and 2.6. It is not uh, you know just a price to book multiple difference. So that is what uh, you know we we try and do here uh, uh, in terms of the companies which earn a return which is better than the cost of equity for multiple years and the returns are superior, the valuation difference uh, would be stark enough.